A reporter was doing a human interest story for a local newspaper and was interviewing an elderly couple who were celebrating 60 years of marriage. The obvious question the reporter poses was, what was the secret for a long marriage? Oh, the husband started, it's all about perseverance. On our honeymoon, we went to the Grand Canyon and rode mules down the trail. My new wife's mule threw her off and she fell to the ground. She got up and yelled, that is one, and got back on the mule. Didn't get the punchline yet. Don't blow it. A couple of minutes later, the mule did it again. And she yelled, that is two. And she got back on the mule. When the mule did it a third time, she yelled, that is three. And she took out her gun and killed the mule. The reporter was shocked at the, at the story and asked, how does this relate to perseverance in marriage? The man replied, well, I told her that was no way to treat a mule. And she looked at me and said, that is one. Do I make points for that one? My friends, our readings today help us to reflect on perseverance, perseverance in our relationships with God in prayer, our perseverance with our neighbors, perseverance in difficult situations which we all must face. We all are aware of that adage, work like everything depends upon you, but pray knowing that everything depends on God. This theme is shown in today's gospel of the widow's persistence, working to gain justice from the judge and the interplay in the first reading between Moses' struggle to keep his hands raised in prayer and the Israelites' battle on the field. In our first reading, Amalek and his troops were not brought to their knees simply by an act of prayer, nor through a military campaign. It took both work and prayer for them to win. Often, as with Moses, persistence in prayer requires the help of others. Sometimes we may wonder where prayer is getting us and in that moment, need the encouragement of others to help keeping us praying. Such was the case of St. Monica, who prayed for the conversion of her son, Augustine, for 27 years. St. Ambrose kept encouraging her. He would tell her, it is not possible that the son of so many tears will be lost. As we know, she lived to see her son a Christian and a bishop. Sometimes it is not what, that we doubt our prayer, but we become weary that it is not being answered in our time frame or for what we are asking. Sometimes, like the Israelites, who look to Moses for security and inspiration, we need the example of people praying around us. We need a faith community. Just think of the many people who have lifted us up in prayer during our difficult times. That's why we gather as a community to pray as often as we can. In our second reading, Timothy urges us to remain faithful to what we have learned and believed to preach the word and to stay with the task, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. 
such fidelity often needs human support. None of us comes to faith in isolation, and few of us can remain faithful and persevere without human Dr. Luther, Martin Luther King, and the Civil Rights Movement. Dr. King, as we all know, was a minister who got on his knees daily to beg God for wisdom to lead a people to justice. However, he daily persevered in every kind of trial, from imprisonment to his own assassination, because of his firm belief that the Lord would conquer all obstacles. The Word of God is preached more loudly by a whole community than by one individual. We show the world of our Christian belief and persevering prayer in our care for the less fortunate among us in whatever form that may take. Faith, which enables persistent prayer, is a communal gift. The widow in today's gospel represents to us a model of persistence based on faith and trust in her pursuit for justice. She is not intimidated by the judge. Undoubtedly, he was an intimidating personality. The fact that a widow who had little, if any, rights or status in her society did not get discouraged from seeking what was her rights is a great example to us of persistence. We live in a time when perseverance has fallen on bad times. We are used to instant gratification. We want what we want, and we want it yesterday. Most of us weren't brought up with that, huh? Most of us who are of my vintage had to wait. We waited for Christmas. We waited until it was the right moment. And we had to persevere in doing it. Perseverance is not only a virtue, but it requires sacrifice. Waiting is something that none of us like. Sick to itness has fallen on bad times. We see this in the relationships, and especially in marriage. When I am preparing young couples for marriage, I often speak to them of dealing with difficult situations and trying to persevere and stay at the table and not bolt. Nine times out of 10, the process of being patient and persevere and working for a solution is satisfactory. Of course, I said nine times out of 10. There's always a 10th situation where something else has to be done. But our society today does not support this presence. No wonder when we try to apply it to prayer, we run into problems. Today's world doesn't really support a lot of Christian beliefs, and I believe perseverance is one of them. Think back to our parents and grandparents. I think back to my own father. He stayed at one job for over 40 years. In those days, the company was faithful to their employee, and the employee was faithful to the company. That has all changed, hasn't it? Nevertheless, perseverance in our relationships with God, self, and others is a virtue to be aspired because the Lord has the big picture. We are lucky if we have one piece of the puzzle, aren't we? So today, my friends, we pray at this liturgy 
for an increase of grace to persevere in prayer, to persevere in our relationships with others, to persevere in working for justice and not to be intimidated. We gather in this Eucharist to remember that Jesus has come and to initiate God's reign and dream for the world. He continues to pour himself out for us and he calls us to be persistent in our mission and prayer and actions for justice and peace. May his grace continue to be sufficient for all of us through Christ our Lord.